Well, um, hello everyone. Welcome to the first lecture of Computational Chemistry Developers Approach Series. I have been thinking lately about how should I or where should I start this lecture and after a lot of thinking I came to this conclusion that maybe the computers or actually the computers are the best part to start with from my perspective. Uh, I have also or uh, during my college days, during my student days, the most of the books related to electronic structure theory that I read has always involved two kinds of introduction. The first introduction or the first kind of introduction would be starting with a basic introduction of linear algebra and then from this linear algebra they would move to the core of the electronic structure theory. The second way would be starting with the limitations of classical mechanics into microscopic world and then they then one basically goes to the introduction of quantum mechanics and then explains the application of quantum mechanics to chemistry and that's how they create this vast subject of electronic structure theory or quantum chemistry as you want to say. Now the thing is, uh, I I wanted to wanted this lecture series to be more involved uh, into the computers or programming part because uh, from my perspective, actually, if you so 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 there there, there is actually three layer of understanding electronic structure theory. The first layer is when you read the book or when you go to a lecture for an electronic structure theory course and after attending that lecture of after reading that book you get one layer of understanding of electronic structure theory then after that the second layer is executed when you yourself directly derive all the equations that are related to the to the subject then you also have a secondary uh, understanding of the subject itself. But finally, when you translate those equations into programming language code or in, in any programming language, be it, uh, so basically in any programming language, if you, if you want, if you translate the, the, de the derived equations to codes, then you have this final touch of understanding the whole subject what is happening, the intricacies, how you can uh, further accelerate the algorithms and etc, etc. So the thing is, uh, without wasting any more time, I would like to directly jump into this uh, introductory session with computers. So, as you can see, the slide or the presentation, the title says Introduction to Computers. But let me be very clear in, in this regard, I would not be dealing into the very detailed description of the computer parts or softwares or anything. This would be a very, very basic understanding of how should we use the computers for our day-to-day -day job in computational chemistry. Right? Okay. So, the first question is generally comes that what is a computer, right? So, we all know it's a very, very common thing nowadays in every household, so to say. That it's, it's basically an electronic device which is capable of doing very simple tasks multiple times. Now, the, the reason that I that I'm telling a uh, simple task and multiple times and the and and emphasizing the task to be simple, you would get an understanding afterwards better why that's why the why those tasks are so simple. One might think or one might say that 
are aimed the computers doing much more complicated tasks the, the huge jump codes but if you really break down each code into simple modul modulars and modules you will see that actually in all of in all of those individual modules there lies a very simple task good and obviously the name computational chemistry suggests that it's the computer are the main tool for this subject now as you all know nowadays we have a, we have a breakthrough in quantum computing but i want to be also clear with you that this video would only concern with classical computers so no quantum computers here okay good next which is very much important or i would say i would like to give a disclaimer here uh, that uh, so a computer has basically two parts hardware and a software now the software interacts with different parts of hardware in a computer to make the work done make the job done right or and this huge system this software is basically the operating system of that particular computer now in very lame words when you usually first buy a, a pc or a laptop you get something when you turn on the pc you get something like a logo shines out and you see you see either it might be windows or mac most commonly to the common people but apart from windows and mac os there is another operating system which is linux and uh, linux is a very old operating system now the thing is we wouldn't be talking about the the details and history of linux how it came into being and this and that but the main part is we would be in this whole video series lecture series we will be using linux as the main operating system in our uh, tutorials so i would encourage and also recommend you to install linux into your computers either using virtual machines or dual boot nowadays it has become really easy even to dual boot a windows pc with linux unfortunately i can't recommend or i don't know how to do a dual boot uh, for linux in mac OS, but you will eventually find some tutorials out there in youtube if you google it or search it okay so we will be dealing with linux so to say as so i also want you to give a give a upper hand so to say to understand how this operating system would be installed or how would you use it in your day-to-day -day basis so this video would be mainly discussing on the installation of linux so i would be giving you a brief tutorial of how to install linux uh, in a in a bare metal hardware so in in a computer without any dual boot or something or else you can also uh, i can also tell you how how do you uh, dual boot your machine with linux and there will be some recommendations of which linux distribution to use now it's a very big topic huge topic which linux distribution you should use but i always recommend to go for the most easier one the most stable one because you are not you can be a computer scientist no uh, no offense but if you want to get your work done please stick to the most so to say famous or uh, well-known distributions among the common people for example there are many examples of those so one is you have maybe have heard of ubuntu 
or Fedora or uh, OpenSUSE or some derivatives of Ubuntu, right? So for the for the for this case of our tutorial, we will be sticking with uh, Linux Mint as I believe that it's pretty easy for a for a first time Linux user. And uh, so the next thing that I would like to do is to show you how to install Linux Mint in your own machine. So you see, we are already in the home page of Linux Mint. So we just basically go to Google and search Linux Mint. And then you enter into the website, go to the download section. And there might be many recommendations like Cinnamon, Mate, XFC. These are all, uh, all different uh, desktop environments, but this is the most uh, default version of Linux Mint, so to say. So I recommend you go and download the Cinnamon edition here. I would not download it because I have already uh, downloaded the the ISO file for that. So if you click download, it will basically uh, give you this web page where you can download using mirrors so these are different links uh, where, where you can download from now either you can go for your closest link here so uh, but just feel free to go for the default default typing because it also makes sense so it, it, it would just like also uh, start downloading but i will cancel the download because i've already downloaded the iso so this is the the way that you can download the ISO file and now you have to flash it in a in a USB stick which you can easily uh, learn from any YouTube video. I, I can also like I will attach some links in the description which uh, which will show you how to flash an ISO file to your USB stick and then you can also put it from there for the installation instruction, I will be skipping the the boot menu, and I will be only discussing about the installation graphical interface. So I will be doing the rest thing on a virtual machine. If you want to know about the whole uh, detailed installation program of Linux, you can watch I think any any YouTube video. I will be linking some videos in my description so that you can get a glimpse of it. So here we start uh, our Linux Mint in a virtual machine. And as you can see, you have options here uh, of starting the Linux Mint. And so I just start it, pressing an enter, and then probably it starts on the screen, obviously. So after flashing the USB drive, when you boot through the USB in your metal hardware, you would end up in this window. Now what you what you usually do is if you have Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi from here and you directly can go to click double click this icon install Linux Mint. And then choose your language. Obviously for me it's English continue English US the keyboard type of keyboard so obviously I use English US keyboard so you can just put it there then you continue you click this you check this box installing multimedia codecs that will help you to watch different multimedia contents in your laptop or desktop or whatever you use if you don't want you can uncheck it then you click continue then after the drivers are ready you see there there is one option called erase disk and install Linux Mint. you can just go for the default or what you can do there will be another option here if you are if you have already a pre-installed operating system like windows or mac 
that install Linux Mint alongside Windows or Mac. You can simply click on that option and the installation system would automatically generate, uh, install the system for you generating a dual boot system. And then you can click install now. After install now, you will be said that what is going to be changed, uh, changed. So it's telling that you have the partition of the disk two uh, would be formatted basically. So it will create two partitions in the disk. And then you can, if you are happy with that, you can just press continue, go for the next step. You choose your location and then uh, you click again, continue. And then you basically give a, give a name, a username for your machine. So uh, this machine username, so what is the name of the PC basically? So name PC and uh, you can choose one of your username. So just username, whatever, you choose a password. And then when you click continue, it will install the system on your machine. Now, this is, I would, I would like you to install any kind of, you are free to choose any, any kind of distributions. But the reason I, I encourage you to install Linux Mint because it's one, it's easier to handle. The installation process is very straightforward. And most of the time, the packages, the software that you'll be using, you it's available in almost all the distros that you see out there, right? I would love you to see uh, install the operating system that I use personally, which is OpenSUSE. But if not, it's not also, not also a problem. We can just easily grab the packages in our in our distribution, and then we can just simply work through it, right? So not a big deal. Okay, so this is it for today. I, I will be back with the next part of this video dealing with which programming language we want to uh, choose and with which programming language we would be working on. So with this, I want to finish my video uh, by saying that uh, the must requirements of the, for the next parts of this video is that you install Linux system in your machine, either dual boot or in a virtual machine. And you will find many videos supporting uh, the procedures and process regarding it. So it would not be a challenge to find things, I would say. It would be pretty straightforward and easy. Choose any kind of distribution you like. And if if don't, you if you are also you can you are if you are if you know the work work around uh, in Mac OS or Windows, you're also feel free to uh, choose those distributed operating systems and work with it. So thank you very much and see you in the next video. Bye.